I know when I was first learning JavaScript, I would sometimes run into a conditional statement that was written in shorthand or a concise format. And I didn't immediately understand how it worked. As I stuck with it, I began to understand it, but also discovered how many keystrokes I could save by using that shorthand method. In this tutorial, we were, are going to look at some conditional shorthand in JavaScript. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, you can check out the discount links to all of my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. And if you'd like to support this channel, I would appreciate the support. There's a link to that in the description as well. Now, we're going to look at three situations where we can write conditional statements that are more concise. Specifically, we will look at making use of truthy and falsy values that can allow us to write more concise conditionals. We will also look at concise logical expressions. This may be something that's new to a lot of you, but it's a nice trick to be aware of. And then finally, we will look at the ternary operator, an operator that was created to make a concise if-then-else statement. Now, all three of these provide concise syntax for conditional expressions. But first, for those that aren't familiar with how we can use truthy and falsy, let me introduce that in a simple way. So let me jump to Sublime for that. So let me introduce that by setting up a variable that has a value of true. Now, I know I did this when I was first learning JavaScript, and you may be doing it as well, which is fine. There's just an easier way to do it. But if I wanted to check to see if that variable were true, I could do this. And it would print out it is true to the console. So I could check it that way. And that works great for us. But there is a shorthand method that is much simpler and much easier and honestly shows that you have been around JavaScript for a little while. We can simply check to see if the value is true like that. We don't need to do the whole comparison. This causes it to check to see if it is true. So really quick, if I refresh that, open up the console, we get that it is true. But what if it's not a Boolean that we're checking? What if it's something else? What if we simply want to see if there is some string inside this variable? Let's change this to a string. In this case, this is going to check to see if something was added to that variable at all if there is some content inside of it. Let's see what we get. There is a value. Now if this is an empty string, that's not going to show up. And the reason that is the case is because an empty string is considered a falsy value, meaning it coerces by JavaScript to a false. So this causes it to course it to a true or a false. Empty string happens to be falsy, so this becomes false. If there's something in it at all, anything, then it becomes true. Now, something else that is a falsy value is undefined and null. So if we declare a variable and we simply want to see if something's been put into that variable yet or not, at times, you have, may have used this long format to check, but that's unnecessary. We can check to see if it's not no longer undefined using an if statement like this. Just log new var has a value. And that works for us. Let's go ahead and run that. We shouldn't see this console log statement because so far nothing's been placed into it. Sure enough, we don't see anything there. 
Now, if I go ahead and set that equal to anything, let's just put a number in there. Now we get that it has a value. So that is a shorthand way of doing that. So basically, anything that is truthy will evaluate to true in a condition. Anything that is falsy we will evaluate to false. And so the easiest way to explain this, or the easiest way to keep track of the truthy and falsy values, are simply to identify those that are falsy. So let's look at those really quick. Zero. A zero is a falsy value. If that is there, JavaScript will co course it to a false. Null and undefined are both falsy values. False, of course, is a falsy value. And an, so if you're doing some computation and it's not a number, this is what you get. That is a falsy value. And then finally, an empty string is a falsy value. So those are the falsy values. So anything other than that would evaluate to true in the case of this sample if statement here. All of these would evaluate to false. Now I've done a more in-depth tutorial on truthy and falsy, which I can link to in the description, and I'll do that. But let's go ahead and move on to the next thing we want to look at, and that's concise logical expressions. This may be something that is new to you, maybe something you're not aware of. Let me first comment out this code, and we're going to take a look at what we can accomplish with concise logical operators. We are able at times to do more precise, to do more concise conditionals using a logical operator. And let me introduce this by showing something at the console. If we have a value that courses default, and then we use a logical and operator, and then we have a value that courses to true, look which value gets returned. It's a falsy value. Now, if they both evaluate to true, notice that the second value is returned. We can use that to our advantage sometimes. So when we use the logical and operator and it results to false, the first value is returned and it vaults to true, the second value is returned. So let's look at a situation where that might be helpful. Let's say we're trying to get a response from a user. And if there is a response, we want to display the response and something along with it. So let's just set up a response text variable. And let's set that equal to the response. So let's say first, we're not getting a response. And in this case, I'll just log to the console. But let's say, when there is a response, we want to add more to it. When there is a response, we won't. We don't want to display anything. So here's how we can do that. We do response text, logical and operator, and then this is the response. This is the additional text that we wanted to add to it. Add the variable that contains the response. And I'm just going to put an exclamation point at the end there, something like this. So if we run that, we get back a blank string. There's nothing displayed. And if we were doing this in HTML, then nothing would display on the HTML page. However, if we did get something back, we did get a response. Then in that case, we would get that response plus whatever we added to it. So another example may be that we put HTML tags around this or something like that. This is also a technique that is used with frameworks like React. So it's a quick way to check to see if there is a truthy or falsy value and then do something based upon that. So a little trick with concise format using logical and. 
Now let me comment that out. We're going to deal with our last scenario now, and this is the ternary operator. And as I mentioned, if then else statements can be quite verbose, but they're also very readable and they're easier to reason about. And so there is an advantage of using the verbose if then else statement. A ternary operator, on the other hand, is simplified, but it is also harder to read and reason about. So there is a trade-off here. But let's just go ahead and take a look at the ternary operator for those of you that aren't as familiar with it. And I also have another tutorial on this that I can link to as well. So let me copy in something, a an if-then-else statement. We're simply checking to see if they're if the score is greater than something, in that case, we give them a message. Maybe this is in a course. We give them a message at the end that they pass. If not, they need to retake the course. So obviously with a score of zero, the message we're gonna get displayed is to retake the course. Now this is the type of thing that can be done in a much more concise way using a ternary operator. Let me just comment out all of that and we'll set up the ternary operator on a single line. So I'm gonna declare my variable and I'm gonna set that equal to the results of this condition. We're checking to see if score is greater than 60. And then this is where we put the part that is true. And the character that we use to indicate that is the question mark. So anything after the question mark is what gets returned if this evaluates to true. And what do we want to return there? Well, we'll just return the same. I'll just copy it up here so I don't have to type it. We'll just return the same text here. Then we put what gets returned if it false. And that is designated by a colon. So we have a question mark first and then a colon. So the parts of the ternary operator are the condition, the question mark, and the colon. So after the colon, let's put this last message here. There we go, let's save this. We should get the same results. Please retake the course. If I come in now and make this 70, we get congratulations, you passed. So I hope this simple discussion was helpful. We talked about concise ways of doing conditionals. If it were helpful, please hit the like button and remember to subscribe. Remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section and click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week and thanks for watching.